Hello everyone and welcome to New Signatures webinar, uh, ASR Recovery Backup and Business Continuity, presented by Aiden Ermey, Solution Architect. Aiden, can you go on to the next slide please? As always with all of our webinars, uh, we will be recording them and the recording will be sent out post the event. Uh, you will receive that email. Question and answers will take place at the end of the webinar. However, at any point during the webinar, please feel free to put your questions in the chat and Aiden will take them as necessary. And with that, I'll hand it over to Aiden. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lindsay. So good morning, everyone or good afternoon, depending on where you're stationed at. Uh, so we're going to start our conversation today around you know, what are some of the modern availability challenges that we have in our current environments today, and then how we can improve upon that and, and benefit from some of the solutions provided by Microsoft. So some of the challenges that we have can be maybe maybe we have multiple disaster recovery and backup solutions in our environments where they might not be interconnected or communicate well together and we want to consolidate these down to a single uh, utility, a single pane of glass to be able to more easily manage and operate that solution. Of course, a lot of our environments are comp uh, very complex. We don't just run Windows environments. We have a mixture of Win Windows and Linux Unix systems. We're not just maybe running on Hyper-V, but we have VMware systems. We have physical systems. So it's not just a, a Microsoft world, obviously. It's a big, more open world where multiple uh, platforms are used throughout the environment. Or perhaps maybe we have business critical applications which can be complicated. We want to maybe migrate those into Azure to use some of the useful services that are there and use a hybrid approach. But perhaps because of these business critical systems being more complicated, uh, more pieces involved, it can be a, a bigger ask and a bigger task to lift and shift that into Azure. Um, so there's some challenges around there that we have to factor in in understanding how we're going to be able to do that and it may be uh, a complicated approach. So when it comes to disaster recovery specifically, we have other unique challenges like having those multiple solutions required to protect our environment. Perhaps our current solution doesn't support all of our business critical systems, which is, of course, a, a big deal. Um, and there's a bit of a challenge uh, with a gap there. How do we ensure that our business is continuing to run in a disaster scenario? Maybe we need to implement a secondary data center for that failover, but doing so can be complicated and can cost a lot of money to maintain and to manage and to keep things operational in two different locations. If we wanted to test our disaster recovery playbook, our process uh, to follow in a DR scenario, that can also present some challenges and potentially even affect our live production environment. You know, doing restores from backup or, or ensuring other pieces are able to communicate within the environment. How do we manage that effectively without causing some uh, issues in our production space? And finally, we have the risk of potential data loss and errors when we fail over to a secondary site. If there's latency between there, uh, there could be some issues. We don't want to have any corruption when we're doing so because we want to ensure our business critical systems are always operational at this point that we need to restore. It's interesting though that a lot of the causes for IT disasters 
are more operationally focused or, or resulting of operational failures and less so for the natural disasters that we're, we're common to, like flooding, uh, earthquakes, and various types of things like that. It's interesting that things like power failures or maybe if we have some hardware failure issues, uh, some issues on the network, or even just software crashes are a bigger factor into our disaster um, scenarios. So how do we account for that and how do we react to that uh, and plan ahead so that when those types of things occur, we have high availability, we have the ability to fail over to different locations to ensure that we are operational at all times because if an application goes down a business critical system whether we are servicing internal customers or divisions and departments or external customers then that can cost time and money so why are we then not considering the use of Azure as a possibility for our availability and, and failover. Well, the first point is that within Azure, the disaster recovery solutions and the backup solutions that are built into that platform, into that environment, are all interconnected. So it's not like we have to have a third-party solution. We have to have third-party costing and licensing around that. It's already built into our subscription into the Azure environment and also like we mentioned Azure supports different types of environments we're not just a Microsoft world right we maybe we're running some Windows we're running stuff on VMware or Linux maybe we just have some physical systems but Azure supports that functionality the disaster recovery scenarios and solutions built into Azure can protect all of those types of environments. So it's not just a Microsoft only type of solution. And if we want to work towards a, a hybrid approach in our environment, perhaps we have our on-prem data center that we're working with and we want to start to, to work with things in Azure, but again, things might be a little bit complicated depending on the applications and systems that we're working with. Well. The solution around this makes it really easy to start to implement that hybrid strategy. With the recovery solution, it allows you to replicate your current workloads, wherever they may be, into Azure. And then once that is replicated in Azure, we can leverage that to tap into other Azure services that we may not have been able to directly link into and access previously. Think about things around the threat intelligence stuff that's coming out. We can think about the uh, business intelligence and analytics and things like that that can really enhance our services, enhance our products to give us the cutting edge against, say, our competitors and therefore enhance our services to our customers. So the key around the solution within Azure, it includes two pieces, the disaster recovery and the backup. So traditionally speaking, uh, our business continuity, our disaster recovery plan may only contain one element of this. We might think about um, backup as, you know, our, our traditional kind of approach, but how do we follow our business continuity DR plan? The solution within Azure from Microsoft actually is a better together story. It puts these two pieces together as the solution. So on the one hand, we have disaster recovery for our application failures. So if an application crashes, again, if we have those hardware failures or, or other things that happen within our environment, the solution empowers us to be able to fail over into Azure very quickly to ensure that it is still operational and up and running. 
and then coupled with that in the same solution we have the backup component so we can do a restore of corrupt or lost data as well so it really works together as two pieces of the same puzzle versus just disaster recovery and backup being separate So within Azure, the solution that Microsoft has developed and uh, enhanced and fine-tuned along the way is called Azure Recovery Services. And we can leverage that to protect and extend our existing on-premises data centers. So within that solution, there's these two components. So the DR piece, which is Azure Site Recovery, from there, we're able to protect our applications from any type of downtime, again, with that replication from our current environment into Azure. So there's a copy of it waiting to basically be lit up in the event of a disaster. But also through that tool, because it has that replication mechanism, it allows us to extend our existing data center into Azure and then use it as a migration tool to lift and shift what we have today into the Azure platform. And then when we're there, we can obviously take advantage of the other services that are available in Azure. On the Azure backup side, we have the enterprise backup where we can do directly from our on-premise environment into the cloud. And it's really designed around replacing our tapes. So we may have a backup solution already on-prem that we're leveraging, and that's fine for, say, disk to disk or that current local storage. But if we think about tapes and needing to store data for a long period of time, that can get a little uh, cumbersome, that can be a little challenging, depending on how far you need to keep that out. And we'll touch on that a little bit later. But the backup solution can be used in replace of our tape storage. Coupled with that, if we are already using pieces of Azure, the IaaS VM system in Azure for running certain workloads, we can actually directly and very easily back up those IaaS virtual machines in Azure as well. So it works across all the different pieces uh, of our environment, whether we're just working against our, our current on-prem data centers or whether we're working against stuff that we're already running in Azure. So how does it kind of work? With Azure Site Recovery, it really is a complete DR solution and also a migration tool. So again, like we've talked about, not only does it support multiple types of environments like Hyper-V, VMware, and physical systems, it supports multiple types of OSs. So we have obviously the Windows OSs and various flavors of that, as well as various versions and builds of Linux OSs as well. In fact, it even works with other cloud providers like AWS. So you could have a workload that's running in Google Cloud or AWS, something of that nature, and you want to protect that in a DR type of scenario or even as a migration effort, you can do so through Azure Site Recovery. You can, link, you can protect that system and replicate that data into Azure. So ASR, which is Azure Site Recovery for short, also supports site-to-site -site protection. So if you already have two data centers, you know, Site A and Site B, it helps to orchestrate and automate the, rep the replication and the failover between those two sites. So whether, again, you're doing physical to physical, VMware to VMware, or, or uh, System Center VMM, to that to two different sites it helps to kind of be the bridge between those two locations keeps things in sync and helps uh, make it easier for a recovery plan to be initiated and fail over very seamlessly 
So when we want to replicate or migrate certain workloads, uh, the DR solution really is on demand and it empowers us to automate failover. And that's a key. Automation helps to have a repeatable process so we could take part of our DR uh, playbook and if certain activities or processes and pieces are standard and, and never really change, we can automate some of those pieces to make them consistent to remove the factor of sometimes having human error or, or things of that nature. So we can use that solution to be able to be more consistent and confident in our disaster recovery processes that we've built. Additionally, we can also use it for third-party workloads So we see like Oracle and SAP and other things like that that are a factor in there as well. So we can use this tool as that migration component if we wanted to move those larger, more complicated workloads into a cloud provider like Microsoft Azure. With uh, ASR, it really gives us multiple scenarios that we can work against through one simple to use solution. So we do get this automated replication. So once you connect the systems uh, together, saying these are the, the workloads that we want to protect, it will automatically keep that replication in sync in the other location. We can control our recovery point objectives and our recovery time objectives on how often we want things to be replicated and how many recovery points do we want to be able to fall back again in a certain period of time. One of the powerful things is this planned and unplanned failover with developing a recovery plan in the solution. You can actually test your DR playbook and use the, the test failover mechanism to go through your process and be confident that the solution works before there is an actual real disaster occurring. So you can create on-demand copies of your production environment and use that for testing. So think about Patch Tuesday, or maybe you have a new version of your app, your app code that you want to deploy, and you want to kind of test that not in a production space. Not every organization has a UAT dev test QA domain or environment for their um, applications. So using the solution, you're able to replicate your production environment into Azure, do a test copy of that, and apply those patches against it. Apply the new code or, or something of that effect against what it really is in production to validate that, yes, these patches won't be, you know, uh, negatively affect our application or the new code works as, uh, as designed before you roll that out into your actual production environment. So there's a lot of scenarios we can use with this tool, not just as a DR solution. It covers many other components that are, are extremely useful to use. So Microsoft has tested many different scenarios and applications. And the point is they continually enhance and add to this solution. So we see some of the uh, Microsoft specific workloads that they've tested and vetted against with the actual support team. So the people that you know, write the code and support some of these bigger uh, applications like SharePoint and Exchange, Active Directory, some heavy hitting stuff there. They've tested it and validated with that team that the solution works for this replication, this failover uh, into different scenarios, whether we're doing site to site, whether we're doing site to Azure, and whether it's Hyper-V or VMware. 
And of course, for third-party things like SAP, uh, Linux stuff, Oracle, um, Microsoft has tested against those uh, components as well. And we see some things are also still in the works. So the point is, it's not just as it is today. The scenarios continue to be added to and enhanced uh, further th down the road. As new technologies come out, as new needs come out, Microsoft continues to enhance that solution even further to make it uh, easier to use and also um, to cover as many scenarios as possible. So we're going to now take a few minutes and we're going to talk about Azure Backup. So remember, we talked about the site recovery DR piece is one element of the real BCDR solution, and the backup couples with that and goes along with that as well. So whether we are using an on-prem environment, maybe we have a hybrid environment, or we're using those IaaS VMs in Azure, the Azure Backup solution can be used across all of these scenarios. Azure Backup integrates with products like System Center Data Protection Manager, so DPM for short, and it also has its own standalone installation solution. So perhaps we're not a large organization to leverage DPM, uh, maybe we're in the small medium business market, well we can have the Azure Backup Server which is nearly identical to DPM in functionality. Um, to be able to have that local disk to disk copying solution and then coupled with those products we can use Azure Backup as that long term tape uh, replacement re uh, storage. So we can integrate into these solutions and use uh, uh, Azure Backup for long term. And if we're using IaaS virtual machines in the Azure platform. Well, within the platform itself, you can directly back up uh, the Azure virtual machines that you're running. So it doesn't matter which real environment or solution scenario that we're in. The point is the solution works across all of the different uh, scenarios. So like we mentioned, Azure Backup gives us this long-term retention option. We really want to think about it as a replacement for our tape storage. So we can think some industry, industries have specific requirements for data retention. We can think about the healthcare industry or legal or manufacturing where there's a certain requirement to maintain data for either like five, seven, or maybe even 10 years. Well, Azure Backup has a retention period of up to 99 years. So if we had to keep backups on tape for up to 10 years or even five or seven years, how many tapes would that be? And how challenging could it be to retrieve data from one specific tape? With Azure Backup, it greatly simplifies that need and the approach around that. So how does it, what does it come down to as far as costs? Well, if you compare things like including software licensing, maintenance required, especially around tape for off-site storage and vendors that you work through, through that service, the cloud-based backup can be a significantly uh, cheaper option to work with. And it's much easier to work with a lot of the time. So how does the mechanisms actually work within the solution? Well, in this example here, we have an Azure virtual machine. And the backup extension, the, the agent is installed on that system. And here it takes a snapshot, a copy of the disks. So it doesn't matter how many disks are on the system. It'll take one of the operating system and any other data disks we may have and transfers that into that backup vault. We can then restore that directly to that virtual machine. We can do restores to another virtual machine uh, just to extract the data. So it's very versatile in the solution. So we're just going to talk briefly about 
how New Signature factors into all of this. So we at New Signature, our main focus is delivering a great customer experience. Yes, we're very uh, technical. We're a premier Microsoft solution provider. But the values that New Signature was founded on continue to drive our success and our commitment in delivering this great customer experience. We help businesses with their technology needs in the solutions and services we provide, but we do so in a multi kind of phase approach. We can sit with you, we can plan the approach that you want to follow and give you guidance there. We can help build that solution or service with you, and then we can act as an extension to your existing uh, IT environment and help operate some of the common routine activities so that your team can focus more on the business strategy on how to improve your business and services while we assist your operational team with monitoring, patching, and regular uh, items like that so that you don't have to worry about that, but we kind of work in tandem with your organization. So from a technology perspective, we deliver a full life cycle of services across the entire Microsoft stack. So whether you're using stuff on premises in your data center, whether you're using stuff in the cloud, in Azure, or you have a hybrid type of environment, New Signature can help you understand the value and realize the benefits of the solutions to help mitigate any risks along the way. We cover many different technologies. Uh, we in basically go from even the custom application development, custom SharePoint development, mobile app development, infrastructure, data, uh, you know, BI analytics. We work through the entire process. So there, we have experts in all of these areas that we can be able to assist and have a conversation with you on any technology. So New Signature has developed a recovery experience built on this ASR, Azure Site Recovery Technology. So we can work with your organization in developing a comprehensive, complete recovery plan and work with our team of experts to help create that plan, update it as needed, uh, as needed do maintenance on there, and even execute that plan. So if there's an actual disaster, we are available 24-7 to take that call and really give you that guidance and assist you in that time of need with our highly skilled team of experts in executing your DR recovery solution and plan. We can utilize the best of the Azure services so that you can rest assured that your application will be available even if your disaster center, or sorry, not your disaster center, your, your data center uh, has a disaster happen to it specifically. So our services are broken down into three pillars or offerings. We have our professional services, our managed services, and cloud applications. So just briefly, our professional services consist of our consulting capabilities, which are divided into two practice areas platform and productivity, and then our design and development area. With our managed services, this is where we include our advisory and operational services, where we can continually, on a continual basis, assist and guide and help our customers. And our cloud applications is where we have packaged SaaS offerings that we've developed on top of the various cloud platforms and productivity technologies available in Azure. So that about wraps it up. We have a few minutes uh, left in our time. I'm able to stay on a little bit later if needed. If anyone has any questions, about uh, any of the solutions or would like to discuss anything in further detail. Great. At this point, you're free to unmute yourselves or place a question in the chat box. 
If you decide that you do not have time nor want to ask something here or think of something post-event, please feel free to email us at any point at info at newsignature.com. We do have the contact information up on the screen. Again, thank you so much for your time today and joining us. This recording will be provided in the follow-up email that will, sent with, will be sent within 48 hours. Thank you. Great. It doesn't look like we have any questions. So thank you, everyone, and have a nice day.